the inspired, creative, demented mind behind Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, Beth Burial. Is that a good representation of what, what you are? I'll own the demented part. Okay, that's great. So what is the inspiration behind Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab? There is a ton of inspiration. It's, um, I was brought up in a household with two teachers and was inundated with mythology and uh, history from day one and it manifested for me here. It, this was the way I express my inspiration from all the things that I grew up with. Because when you look around to all the perfumes, there's so many great names that have lots of literary references and, and kind of romantic references and mythology. What are some of the names? Well, our best-selling scent by far is snake oil, and um, that came about a little bit as, um, as a joke. People wore it to feel sexier, so it, you know, got the got a name for being like a sideshow medicine. And we've got uh, glowing vulva, which is a seasonal scent that we have. Um, comes out every Valentine's Day. Did you just say glowing vulva? Yeah, and oh. it, but it's based on Edo era art. So we were, and, and what is that? It's Japanese? Yeah, okay. it's, it's a Japanese form of art, and uh, it's early form of pornography. So, for early like 1960s, early or uh, 18th century. Oh, okay. All right. I haven't seen that. So, have uh, we make have a mental note. <laughs> have a look at that. <laughs> what do people love about Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab? Because there's a lot of like you, you get this sense that there's like it's a subculture. I think that people. Um, we're brought together with a common interest. Either it's the themes that we use for the perfumes or the perfumes themselves. And instead of looking at it like a cosmetic that you put on yourself, it's something that you're bringing out from inside. So it's, I think it's a unifying thing, oddly, perfume. And I think that uh, there's a reason why certain scents inspire emotional responses in people and it, I guess it mimics witchcraft. So, you know, you can use roses to make people feel more loving or carnations to make people happier. Have you gotten any feedback about what emotions you've triggered or odd reactions? We have a perfume called Veil, which is kind of a, um, like a ghostly, ethereal scent. Mm. And we had, a, I guess, a, a complaint from one of our customers that every time she smelled it, she would have nightmares at night. That it triggered something really primal and upsetting within her. And even though I feel bad about that, it was still something that was amazing because we really elicited responses with people, so. What's yeah. the weirdest strangest perfume that you've ever created? We did a series for a company called Dark Delicacies that's out in Burbank and it was based on um, horror film tropes and Gore Shock, which is uh, basically the slasher film genre, we made a scent that supposed to smell like metal and burnt flesh and pulpy innards and we tried to get it as true to form as possible. It's not our best seller, but it's probably our strangest scent. So how many bottles have you sold of Gore Shock? Probably 20. Oh, 20! <laughs> so there's 20 sick, crazy people who want to smell like burnt flesh and pulpy innards. Or at least it's curiosity factor. And wh how, what sort of ingredient do you put in a perfume to, to make it smell like pulpy, disemboweled? No. <laughs> What's the difference, this is probably kind of a dumb question, considering that I'm standing here in a black room covered with tarot cards and skulls and people dressed up in a very gothic, festive Pink fashion. Pink is my favorite color. Oh, well I can see that. <laughs> but I'm wondering, how would you say, what, what it really is the difference between mainstream perfumes and what you do? I think that a lot of people are more concerned with making something that people are gonna purchase. And that's, that's the beginning and the end result. So it ends up really formulaic like cheesy, overproduced pop music. There's no real inspiration behind it because you have top, middle, and bottom notes that traditionally either we're conditioned to believe that we should like or we do like. So I, I think that the perfume industry is better served by people who are more experimental because it does the customer a disservice making the assumption that they're gonna want this flat, you know, one note. Well, do you consider what you do art? It sounds kind of cheesy and arrogant, but yeah, I do. And I think that good perfume, all the companies that make good perfume are making art. It's just something that's a little bit underappreciated because it's not traditionally considered a form of art. Do you think that, uh, do you think that your customers hold it against you that you create 
smells called Shining Vulva and <laughs> Gore Shock, which smell of I don't even want to venture to guess. But I, well, Glow of Vulva is actually a really, really good seller. Really, uh, really strong seller. I'll take your word for it, Beth. You're not trying to please people, so that could kind of work against you, I'm thinking. I think that our customers, as a rule, respect that we're not going out of our way to make things that smell like cupcakes so everybody wants to use it or smells like um, like aldehydes so everybody wants to spray it. We don't smell like you're walking into a Sephora. Mm -hmm. So um, the people that tend to come to us are looking for something a little bit different. So, and I think that as many people as we offend, we entertain. How many perfumes do you have? I see bottles everywhere. We have uh, rotating limited edition scents that go in and out seasonally, but um, our general catalog stays fairly consistent at about 600. 600. But this is 600 over the course of almost a decade. So it's not like, you know, I just uh, vomited up 600 cents all in one day. Wow. <laughs> what a beautiful smelling pile of barf that would be, Beth. Delightful. Are you trying to target different personalities and different people with each of these fragrances? Not really. Um, I, I find it really difficult to look at the customer and say, okay, you know, I need to make a foodie scent because people like foodies, or I need to make like a gourmand because that's the big thing this week. You know, oh, everybody's wearing angels, so I need to do something like that. I can't, that's stifling, and I end up, um, if I get tripped up by something like that, then we have a really crap scent come out of me. So what I do is, um, seasonally, what I'm inspired by, or what I've been reading, or thinking about, or, you know, daydreaming about that week, starts to translate little by little into a scent that will eventually come out. And some, you know, the process for some scents takes a few years, and some, kind of, it, it sounds really cheesy, but some are like inspired like lightning, and then I can develop the scent far more quickly. Well, you're so prolific, Beth. What accounts for churning all this stuff out? OCD. I probably need medication, but if I had medication, we wouldn't have a store. Oh, lovely. Can you recommend a fragrance that you think would fit me? A portrait in perfume, if you will? I would say Harlot. For oh, sure. that's nice. It's a compliment. Oh, is it now? Oh, that's really pretty. That's roses. That's really light roses. I smell like a harlot. <laughs> <laughs> Mom will be so proud. the best about Black Phoenix Alchemy? The fantasy behind it all and the smells. I mean, each each fragrance comes with its own description and when you read it, no, even if you haven't smelled it, you want to buy it. <laughs> so it just sells, you know, on its own. People get really sucked into the glamour of it and they, do you think that there's an element of when you wear the perfume, you actually become that character? I think so. I think, um, it makes you feel pretty, sexy, you know, seductive, sensual, depending what you're going for. Or you may want to feel, you know, um, you may want to go to a bondage ball and wear perversion instead, you know, and it depends what, what mood you're in. And what mood are you in tonight? What are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing Haunted. It's Haunted. one of my favorite, yes. Ah, and what's in that fragrance? What is in that? Musk, I believe, amber. Oh, that um, sounds good. I like those things. Yeah. You can smell me. Oh, I want to smell you. Oh, she smells good. <laughs> what a fantastic party. This is going so well. Are you happy? I'm thrilled. Thank you. Yes. It's amazing. And you've opened up my nose to so many new experiences because thanks to you, I'm a harlot, I'm haunted, and I'm covered in smut. <laughs> and that's because of your perfume. And that's what we do best. And how can people who are interested in this find out more about what you do? We've got a website. Okay. It's blackphoenixalchemylab.com, the world's longest URL. Okay. And uh, our sister store is blackphoenixtradingpost.com. Perfect. I can't wait to get smutty later with all my good smells.